in the middle of the storm louder and louder you gotta hear my praises roar up from the ashes hope will arise death is defeated the king is alive i raise a hallelujah of my enemies yes Lord hallelujah. I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief yes Lord I raise a hallelujah my weapon is a melody I raise a hallelujah. Heaven comes to fight for me. Can y'all sing? I'm gonna sing. I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm. Louder and louder. You gotta hear my praises roar. Up from the ashes, my hope will arise. The king is alive. I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm. Louder and louder. You gotta hear my praises roll. Up from the ashes, my hope will arise. Death is defeated. The king is alive. Greetings to you in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You know, we are all in a transformation or a transitional phase. The yesterday will not be here today, neither will today be tomorrow. What I mean by that is, we are changing drastically. We are changing the way we are thinking, we are changing the way we are talking, and we are even changing the ways of implementation. Everything is changing. The world was never like how it was before. The world has been a totally different place. So we should not anchor yourself to one particular uh, solution. The reason why I'm saying that we should not anchor ourselves to one particular solution is because as things change, that means every moment, Every, every situation is temporary. So when every situation is temporary, why do you want to give a permanent solution for a temporary problem? For example, if your wife and you are arguing, then never take a permanent solution, never give a permanent solution for that argument, that is divorce. If you are, if you are, if you are having family problems or if you are, if you're ha having financial problems in this pandemic, do not give a permanent solution for this temporary problem. The reason why I want to say that is that you should not anchor yourself to anything in this season. You should not anchor yourself to a permanent habit, to a permanent thing. Why? Because change is taking place. And as a matter of fact, change is the only guarantee that you have in your life. Change is the one and only guarantee that you have in your life. You know, just like how a river flows, right? The, the water in the river, it flows, it's continuous, it has a continuous flow. It doesn't stop, it doesn't, and it, does, it always changes. The same water will not be repeated again. The same way, life is also like that. Life is also just like that running water. You know, you cannot step in the same place with the same water in a flowing river. Just like how you can do that, you should also not do or give a permanent solution in this temporary problem. Never do that. You know, so what can we do about this change? Well, if you really want to improve your life, if you really want to grow past and beyond the changes that is happening, then you know, you know what you need to do? You need to adjust yourself 
according to the change. You need to make a certain and a few changes according to the change. You can manage change when you are, if you don't want to be a part of the change. You know, because of change, if you can manage change, that is when you will rise above the change. Well, there was a man driving on a car and it was a nice, beautiful weather and he was driving in a convertible car. So because of the beautiful weather, the nice cool air and there is that golden hour, you know, in the evening, that was the time he was traveling and he thought, let me just enjoy myself in this beautiful weather and the sun. So he pulled the convertible back and he took the top of the car and he set it back. And he was enjoying that nice cool breeze, that beautiful sunset and all that. And in just five minutes, what happened was that beautiful evening turned into an evening of thunderstorms. Suddenly he had rain gushing on his windscreen and all that. So what he did, he just pulled back the top cover of the car and he started enjoying his car ride in that rain. Well, if you look at his situation, he didn't really cry that there was rain. He didn't stop his car because it was raining and everything was down. He didn't do that. What he did was he made certain changes. He pulled back the convertible top and he turned on the wipers of the car and he started going forward in that beautiful rain. Well, my dear friends, a lot of you are in this position, but you're not able to understand that with a few certain changes, you can actually change your life according to the change. You can actually change your life and adapt to the new life system that is being implemented. Well, you were a child previously, right? Previously, you used to wear a shoe size of three or four size number. But now because you're old, your, your, your shoe size has changed. So you don't cry saying that my shoe size has changed. That's very horrible. No, you don't feel bad about that. You feel good because you're growing. So what do you do? You just throw the old shoes. You go to the shop and buy the new pair of shoes. That's exactly what we need to do. You don't cry over things which want to shape you and grow you. You don't say, ayo, my life has come to a ruin because you're growing, my dear friends. Change is also you enabling yourself to grow. Change makes you or forces you to change if you do not adapt yourself according to the change. So change is the only thing that is constant in the world. Change is the only thing that is constant in the world. This is what Mahatma Gandhi said. Be the change you wish to see in the world. You yourself be the change that you wish to see. If you wish to see a certain change, be the change. In Hebrews chapter 13 verse 8 we see, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. Hallelujah. So what do we mean by that? That means God is the only one who doesn't change. Except God, everything else changes. Except God, everything else changes. God is constant. God is constant in this world. My dear friends, God doesn't change. God doesn't change, neither does his words change. God never changes and his words, they never change. His words and God, they never change. So whom can we trust? The one and only God who formed this earth with his word. You know, we see in Genesis chapter 1, we see in the beginning, God created. You need to understand another fact that he also created something called the beginning. He created a beginning and then he created the sun, the moon, the stars. You know, God is beyond your time. God is beyond the sunrise and the sunset. God is beyond the orbit of the moon. God is beyond the things which seem so simple to understand to you because God is beyond seasons. God is beyond time. You know, the Bible says, He is the Alpha and Omega. 
That means he is not the beginning and the end, but he is the one who creates the beginning. He is the one who creates the end. That's who he is. God is beyond time. My dear friends, so God is the one who never changes. God and his words, they never change. You know, in Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10, we see, So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am with you. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. God says, you my dear friends, do not worry. Do not be dismayed. Do not cause your face or your chin to go down. Why? Because I am your God. Hallelujah. I am your God. And you know what? I will strengthen you. And I will help you. I will uphold my righteous right hand. And I will lift you up. That is exactly what God says. My dear friends, you know, the only thing that doesn't change is God and his promises. God never changes in the same way his promises Neither do they change. His promise says, I will protect you. His promise says, I will strengthen you. My dear friends, are you down in this season? Are you dismayed in this season? Are you worrying whether your job is going to stay or go away in this season? Are you worrying about your financial position? Or probably you have lost somebody in your family and you're deep down worrying what is going to happen to my family? Probably you have lost a key person in your family. My dear friends, it is not wrong if somebody is lost. But what is wrong is how, whether you are adapting to that change or not. Whether you are adapting to that change or not. In this season, you must have lost probably your loved one. You must have lost a very good friend of yours. You must have lost somebody who means a lot to you? My dear friends, you might have seen changes in your life, but you know what? God is the one who's saying, I will strengthen you. I will uphold you. I will lift you up. And I am your God. Hallelujah. What a beautiful scripture. The word says, do not fear. Do not fear. For I am your God. For I am with you. God says, I am with you. Do not fear. Do you, know, do you know? Due to fear, many people lost their lives in this pandemic. Just because they were, they were infected with COVID, they thought they should end their life. Some of them were so afraid that they even committed suicides because they were infected. They thought that is the end to their life. My dear friends, as a matter of fact, that is not an end to your life. Rather, that is just a change to your life. That is just a change to your life. My dear friends, you might be a very strong man before. But now because of this pandemic, you might have turned fearful. But the Lord says, do not fear. Do not fear. Do not fear. The reason why you shouldn't fear is because our God is with you. Our God is with you. He is standing right next to you and he's saying, come on, my child. We can cross this pandemic together. We can cross this disaster together. We can overcome all these situations together, my dear friends. Have you ever seen a savior and be fearful? Will you ever see a savior and will you ever fear your life because there is a savior in your life? Never, never. You will never fear when you have a savior in your life. That is exactly why you should stop fearing because fear is the opposite of faith. Fear is the opposite of faith. Wherever fear is there, faith cannot work. That's the reason why Jesus Christ was not able to perform miracles in a certain place. Why? Because there was a lot of fear. There was a lot of unfaithfulness over there. You know, when, when you have unfaithfulness, that is when fear overwhelms you. That is when fear overwhelms your, your complete mind. In Psalm 91 verse 3, he says, Surely he will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilences. You might have been in that snare. You might have been caught up in that snare. But you know, my friends, my God says, I will rescue you. 
I will rescue you even from the fowler snail. I will rescue you from the deadly pestilence. This pestilence that we are in right now. God says, I will rescue you. You might have been attacked because of that pestilence, but I will protect you. I will redeem you. Hallelujah. What a beautiful verse. You know, whatever may be your fear in this season, whatever may be your problem in this season, God says, I will protect you. God says, I will make sure you overcome your fear, my dear child. I want to share a good news with you. The good news is, God is with you. No matter what your situation is, no matter where your office is, what kind of office you're working, what kind of work situation you are in, what kind of financial problem you're facing, God says, I am with you and I am going to redeem you. I'm going to rescue you. I am going to protect you. You know what? God will fight every battle that comes before you. God is the one who will fight every battle that comes before you. Why? Because you are the apple of his eye. You are the apple of his eye. You are the precious one, my dear child. And you know what? You, because you are the precious one, he says, call unto me and I will answer you. Call unto me, I will answer you, my dear child. I don't know what, you're, what problem you are facing. I don't know. What kind of fears you have in your life right now? But let me read a scripture and encourage you this morning. Psalm 50 verse 14. Sacrifice thanks offerings to God. Fulfill your vows to the Most High and call on me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you and you will honor me. Hallelujah. Call unto me in the day of trouble. Call unto me on the day of trouble. If you're having a bad day, if you're having, going through that bad patch of life, if you're going through that bad phase of life, God says, call unto me. And I will answer you. Call unto me. Don't call, don't call an unauthorized dealer. But you know what? Call me. Call unto me and I will answer you. You know what? On the day of trouble, you might worry, God, I didn't, I didn't worship you till now. I wasn't faithful with you till now. I was doing just my own business till now. I am mending my own business, oh Father. Oh Lord, I never even had time to pray for you. But you know what God says? Call unto me on the day of trouble. God is like, God is saying, don't worry about the past. We'll deal about the past later on. Don't worry about it. You know what? Just call unto me. If you are, if you are facing troubles in your life, if you, are, if you are facing bad situations in your life, God says, call unto me. And I will answer you. In Mark chapter 5 verse 36 we see. Overhearing what they said. Jesus told him. Don't be afraid. Just believe. Don't be afraid. Just believe. My dear friends. I, can you believe what God has promised for you today? Can you, can you stand on the promises. Which God wants you to stand on today. Don't be afraid. Just believe. You know, the world will give you a lot of, will throw you into a lot of situations. It will give you a lot of confusing situations. It will cause problems with, between husband and wife, between father and child, between mother and children, between in-laws and the family. Whatever may be your problem, God says, call unto me and I will answer you. My dear friend, if you can believe is what the world says. If you can believe, everything is possible for the one who believes. Everything is possible for the one who believes. You know, God and his promises, they will never change. God and his promises, they will never change. So what you need to do? You need to start believing in the promises of God. Start believing in the promises of God. Say to God, moan to God, yell to God, say, God, I have your promises with me. Come and rescue me. So on this Sunday, this is what I want to say and finish the sermon. All that God requires from you is just for you to believe him and his word. 
if you can believe in him and his word you know what god will start working in your life that is what he says don't hear anything don't believe anything just believe me don't be afraid of anything whatever big might be your situation whatever big might be a problem god says believe me and i will answer you believe in me and i will answer you my dear friend if you are there watching this sermon if you are there holding your life in your hand fearful of what is going to happen tomorrow fearful of what is going to happen in your future god says don't worry my child believe in me i will rescue you call unto me and i will answer you i am going to i am going to redeem you rescue you from the fowler snare i am going to rescue you from the fowler snare so my dear child you know what you need to do in this deadly time you know what you need to do in this testing times what you need to do is you need to hold on to the word of god you need to hold on to the promises of god you need to adapt yourself uh, holding on to the promises of god and saying god cover me with the blood of the lamb God cover me with the blood of the holy one. Oh my dear father, thank you for bringing Christ down for me so that he is my protector. He is the one who reigns in my life. Oh my dear father, I thank you. Can you say that today, my friend? I would like you to close your eyes and pray along with me. Oh my dear father, we thank you for this time that you have given to us. We thank you for this word that you have given to us, Lord. Lord as we are seeking you Lord as we are growing inside you father Lord in these testing times of oh, father with a few adjustments to our life holding on to the promises of God we know that we can co- get ourselves covered with the blood of the lamb just like how that man who was driving in the car was covering himself with the convertible car of oh, father Lord we are we are covered by the blood of the lamb Oh my dear father no pestilence can affect us no pandemic can affect us oh father because we are protected by the one who formed and framed this world jesus my dear god we thank you for this beautiful verse lord there might be people who are suffering financially there might be people who are suffering in their relationships due to this pandemic there might be people who are suffering oh father my dear god but whatever might be the situation we submit our situations into our, into your life we submit our situations at your feet of oh father lord we thank you for this word lord everybody whoever has accepted you and whoever has heard this word and responded of oh father lord let them respond in the way that they can understand your promises and your word of oh father lord thank you for your protection Thank you for your guidance. Lord, thank you for making us fruitful even in these testing times of oh father. We thank you and we love you. In Jesus name we ask and pray. Amen. May the love of the Father, the grace of the Son, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us for now and forevermore. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hope this message has been a great blessing to you. Hope you have a great week ahead. and again see you in a few days thank you god bless you